But first, was that the, <coughs> how was the chaos of that? Because a lot of people only train with these hands coming up out of the center line. And man, now these things are swinging from all these weird directions. What did, you, what did it do to your brain? What did it feel like? What did it it's different. It's, different, yeah. it's like, well, oh, there's like an adjustment you have to make. It happens in your eyes. It happens in your eyes and not get locked into looking at the damn thing. Because it's different and it's going to be attractive to you. Because your subconscious is going to go, wow, this is different. And it's going to start trying to program ideas. And it gets a little treacherous. You start, what, what, what do I do? I'm supposed to be able to. Ooh, in the middle of it, and then he's reacting, and his thing's flying at him. I'm supposed to be able to. That's what our heads do. I'm supposed to be able to. Ah, and you find out it's not happening like you're supposed to sometimes. Yeah, that's chaos. <laughs> Welcome to chaos. As far as the magic and illusion principles that we use to, to distract people, yeah. we always try to move in arcs because whenever you move in arcs, it's an unpredictable motion, and the brain will instantly begin to track onto that more. Ah. Or focus exclusively on that. When you move in straight lines, it's so simple, the brain will, won't respond to it and follow it. So if you want somebody to follow a motion, you make an arc, mm -hmm. and it'll lock onto it. So it's not That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I've never heard it put that way. That's why this works so well. Here, come and do this, will you? And you say, hey, guy, 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 ah! And you say, yeah, this, that wonderful thing. I love that. And that's the arc thing. Yeah. That's exactly what you're talking about. You give them an arc to follow, and they will tend to follow it. And so what we're talking about is, is don't get sucked into the arc so much if you can, if you can avoid it. Kind of start training against following the arc all the time with your eyes. Because it is in the eye. The eyes will start sucking you into this loopy, loopy thing. Yeah. So um, Amanda was falling nicely, but she was also just resting her arm at the end. And that show moved. me, show me. So, so I would attack, and she would attack, and she would just let her. Let her oh, oh yeah. very nice. Yeah. Her whole body would just float down. One of the concluding things we're talking about uh, that we haven't got to yet, but yeah, letting the weight of the arm fall. <laughs> is a powerful tool that we forget about. We think about pushing down. We think about trying to make something go down. A whole different thing when this arm just falls on. And wow. There's a fight. It's a dead weight. Arbitrarily decide I'm going to come up. Mm -hmm. She's still and it's floating. Yeah. It. Kapow. Yeah. You, you fall into a hole. Yeah. You've got a lid on your hole and bounce against it. Cool. That's wonderful. Cool. A lot of stuff. Okay, I would recommend going slower <laughs> as you go into this next thing, and probably just stay in threes. I think four is kind of crazy for this. So you know, some people just have to take turns moving in and out with threes. Cool? And uh, yeah, in involve yourself with just the arcs for a little while. So again, it's predictable enough that you can start getting comfy again. And once the arcs are happy and you're not really getting too crazy with that, then you go back to some hands that are coming straight and some more. Okay? Questions? All right, try it. Try it. Parent, get into three. How much should I have? go back to slow if we need to. Oh, yeah. You got three, you got four. If you got a couple, you separate. <laughs>